Hi everyone, welcome back to Beautiful British English where we give you bite-sized English fluency lessons. Today I'm going to teach you an easy way to use your modal verbs and to always get them correct. Right guys, so today I'm going to introduce you to um, a little technique that will help you to more effectively use your modal verbs and to get them right not 100% of the time but at least 95% of the time. This little technique um, is very, very simple. It's not foolproof, yeah? But it will help most of you to use most of your modal verbs most of the time correctly. And we're gonna use these six modals. Would, could, should, may and might, have to and must. May and might are almost the same, so I've counted them as one modal. I'm going to use these modals in a very, very simple sentence. I blank go. Obviously, the blank space is where the modal goes. So let's start with would. So our scenario is you have been invited to a party or an event and I'm asking you, would you like to go? Would you like to go? And your response is, yes, I would go to the party. I would go to the party is you being 100% sure about your commitment to go to the party. So would is describing 100%. Is that clear so far? Excellent. So that does bring us next to could. Could is not as 100% accurate as would. Would is 100%, could is kind of 70%. There are some circumstances that may stop you from going to the party. So, I could go if I have the time. Yeah, you may not be sure that you have the time. You would like to go, 100%, but you might only be able to, to go if you have the time. So, I, I would go, but I could go if I have the time. Now, that brings us to should. Now, should is what I like to call the wagging finger because whenever anybody is using the word should with you, or perhaps you're using the word should with somebody else, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of saying, well, you should do something. Perhaps I'm saying to you guys, well, you should go to the party. Yeah, you should go. You know it's going to be good for you. You should go to the party. So I like to call it the wagging finger. So just imagine whenever you're going to be using the word should, that you're wagging your finger at somebody and you're kind of saying, well, you know you should be doing this. Yeah? Right, that brings us to may or might. These both modals, they are very, very identical. There's very, very little difference between them. Uh, may or might are basically you saying 50-50. Yeah, I may go to the party, I might go to the party. It's, it's almost like, you know, you haven't decided either way yet. I may go, I may stay at home. Yeah, you might, I don't know, you might decide to flick a coin in the air and choose heads or tails. Heads, you go to the party, tails, you stay at home. If you don't know what I mean by flick a coin and heads and tails, let me know and I'll explain it in another video. So that's may and might, 50-50. Now that brings us next to have to and must, which most of you are gonna know as modals of obligation. And you're absolutely right. Now, I've put 90% here because these, kind, these two modals sort of sit somewhere between could and would, but they are very different because particularly have to, if you're going to use the, the modal have to, if you kind of try and imagine that it's not your decision, it's somebody else telling you what to do. Yeah, so perhaps, perhaps your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your mother, your father is saying, you have to go to the party, you have to go to the party. They're not exactly wagging the finger at you with should, it's a lot stronger than should, they're saying you have to. So it's a modal of obligation, you have to do it, but it's not your choice, somebody else is telling you you have to do it. Whereas must is you deciding on your own 
that you must do it. You must go to the party. I must go to the party. You might not want to go to the party, but you must go to the party. I, now, I hope all of that kind of makes sense to you. So this little technique will help you to use these modal verbs more effectively. Now, if you liked this video, um, and you would like to see more videos like this on modal verbs or anything else relating to English, then, uh, for, number one, subscribe to my channel. Number two, like this video, leave me a comment to let me know that you like this kind of stuff and you want to see more stuff like this, and I will produce more videos for you to watch. So subscribe to my channel, leave me some comments, and keep coming back because there'll be more videos soon.